Oh, Dude, I was like. <laughs> your thing. No, sorry, mom was asking a question in the audience. Um, also, do we have anybody new to our community tonight? Like, is anybody showing up here for the first time? Yeah, I mean, um, the little like clover heart indicates somebody's new, which is always really cool. Oh, really so Hi, everybody. <laughs> this is so exciting. <laughs> We're so excited to see you. We're, we we pride ourselves on being a really welcoming, friendly, inclusive community. So we love having you here. We're so excited you decided to join us tonight. Um, and jam or not, like you're absolutely welcome to stick around and, and get to know some people. We do a lot of fun things here. We have a lot of really cool educational opportunities as well. Um, many of them are also free for the community that you can kind of join and learn and and grow. So we're just really excited to have you here, you guys. So welcome. Definitely. Welcome. welcome. Um, I'm just answering a question that everyone probably already has, but I got a DM about it. Um, yeah, uh, networking will be after. So, um, uh, as a addition to the off, um, we're going to be going down just, you know, what the Indie Game Foundry is. Uh, we're going to talk about the jam a bit and what the uh, logistics are for that. And then afterwards, we're going to be hosting um, a, a networking event in our gather afterwards for anybody who is still looking for teammates, still looking to join a team, or if you just want to network with some people, share LinkedIn info, portfolios, whatever you want to do. It's also an opportunity for you to do that. So it's, you're more than welcome to join, even if you already have a team or if you're just looking at some new people and you're not even going to be doing the jam anyways. But you should probably do the jam because it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> All right. As far as um, I see questions in the chat about a theme, and the theme is make a cool game. <laughs> it's really, that's it. Uh, the, the purpose of Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Like, yeah. Um, so, yeah, just to go over that a little bit more after we kind of talk yeah. a bit about why we've made made this jam specifically. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't have any restrictions on theme, just to kind of let you know on that. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so Claire, I think I'm just going to share my screen and then we'll just get started. We are going to be recording this. Nick or Rick and Hamna and maybe other people are recording this. So if you're needing to leave in the middle of this, totally fine. We'll have this available later. Um, do you want you me to, to review? Do you want me to share it or you got it on your side? I got it. It's fine. Uh, okay. I just need to start doing it. And do the classic. Can everyone see my screen? <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Almost. There it is. Perfect. Okay, great. Um, all right. So, okay. What can, can you guys see? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Have, yeah. There you go. We can still see the sides too. So if you. That's want. fine. Yeah, it's it's easier for me to just know what's what's happening. <laughs> so um, if you don't already know where you are, this is the Indie Company. Um, we are a a lot of things. We're a game development community. Um, we teach people how to make video games. Uh, we teach people how to be indie studio founders. Um, and we are really excited to announce the next. The next version of IGA, you guys are all familiar with level one, level two, level three. Um, and this jam is celebrating the upcoming that we are going to be having in our community. Uh, so this first, is this is. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Jeff. I, <laughs> okay. say I was just going to say, this, this is a title that's just Founders Jam kickoff. I didn't make it any fancier than that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am seeing a couple people post some some questions in the in the chat. That's wonderful. Um, if you can, while we're going through everything, if you can mark your questions with a little Q, the little Q symbol, that way we can go back mm -hmm. here and double check. Um, Actually, Claire, do you want us to do the, um, that form that we did before? Would that be easier, or do you want to do questions in the I chat? I think we can just do chat tonight. I think that's that's okay. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So yeah, go ahead, Jess. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Oh, it's totally fine. I'm honestly, I'm going to, because Indie Game Foundry is very much, you know, your <laughs> creation, a lovely, lovely, lovely thing. Um, uh, I'm going to just hand this off to you so you can get everybody up to speed as to what the Indie Game Foundry is. 
Sure. So I saw some people in chat here tonight um, that maybe can't participate in this jam, but are kind of curious about what the Foundry program is. So we're going to kind of do a quick review of that if you're unfamiliar or haven't seen this before. Um, this is a new program that we're launching um, this year, and we're actually going to be starting our first cohort next year. Um, and I did see kind of a, a question here. Rico, if I don't get to that question, remind me, and I will be sure to answer it later, OK? Um, but just to kind of get us started here, um, so number one thing is the problem, right? I'm sure that it, particularly for juniors, getting into the gaming industry is incredibly hard to do. Um, and a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things that have kind of complicated things. Uh, the the industry is looking a little bit better for hiring recently, but it's still really, really hard. Um, it particularly as a junior to get a, to get a, you know, a job in this industry. And so we wanted to do something about it. Um, so just kind of talking a little bit about the problem. Um, again, we've had 180,000 people in the tech industry laid off uh, recently. Um, it's There's more competition than ever before. Like if you haven't got like a resume that's like incredible and you haven't worked for like several AAA studios, like we're really tired of the cycle of everybody, the same people getting hired over and over and over again. And we really believe that the junior deserves a chance and that junior developers are the way of the future and are what's going to lead innovation and what's going to really make a change in this industry. Um, so while there is currently around a five to seven percent placement rate of juniors applying for or just just yeah juniors applying for jobs in the game industry over a 12 month period, that's pretty rough, but we think that there's opportunity there. So um, if you can go to the next slide for me, Jess. We're going to talk about the solution, and that for us is Foundry. Um, so Foundry is, uh, we believe that the instability of the current game industry, particularly with the rounds of layoffs and, you know, the AAA, AA scene, a lot of it's very monetary based, right? Um, so of course, everybody likes to eat, right? There's no problem with making money, but when you're whole, when you, when you have to invest millions upon millions upon millions of dollars to make a game, you don't really have the flexibility to take a lot of risks and your game has to succeed or else you lose. Like it's just really bad. They're under so much pressure. Um, and also you have investor money drying up right now too. So when you look at like what game, like game developers in the big scenes have to do, they really have a high bar to meet in order to be financially capable of existing and sustaining themselves. Indies, however, we can be scrappy, right? We can kind of we can kind of go off the rails a little bit. We can take more risks. We can be a little bit more edgy. We don't have to worry about making back two hundred and fifty million dollars to make a game succeed. You know, we can start something from the ground up and really try something new, and not be behooven to these rules of investors and C suites and all this kind of stuff telling you what you need to do. So that's why we made Foundry. Um, we really believe that decentralizing game development is also a way to for better treatment of people in the game industry. Um, we really want to be part of it. If you look on our website for IGA, a really big part of our commitment is making sure people are treated right um, and equity, uh, you know, being equitable across the game industry as well, um, and making sure the little guy is looking after, you know, like making sure that it's diverse and welcoming to all people. So. That's a huge, huge part of why we launched this program. So let's talk a little bit a bit more about the Foundry program. You can go next slide for me. Yeah. Um, there it is, there's a lovely logo. We love sharing it. Um, we did have two <laughs> members in our community helped us. Chase is the artist that we hired um, to put this artwork together. We're gonna shout out to Chase who, I don't know if Chase is in the audience tonight, but also we had our musician. We have a little tune, but you can't hear it tonight, but Jamie also put that together from our community. So going on to the next part here. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about what indie, what is it? So what is Indie Game Foundry? So Indie Game Foundry is an educational incubator that is meant to accelerate the game development process for you. So we want to take junior developers, with specifically junior developers that nobody else really wants to take a chance on. We do. Um, really, we want to teach you how to do this right. Um, we want to take away some of the question marks and kind of smooth over a lot of the pitfalls that juniors kind of face whenever they launch their first studio or try to launch their first commercial game. And that's what we're here to do. Um, so we're going to be doing this. We have a four-year track record of education that we have used to kind of provide people a, a pathway into the gaming industry and teach them how to make games. And this is the next step in that process. So some of you did ask about our level one, two, and three. Level one is great introduction. You've never made a game in your life. Level one is a perfect way to kind of jump in and realize it's really not that scary. 
Um, level two is taking that to the next level. Rick is actually our professor for level two. He's in the audience tonight and is amazing. Um, so he also, that's our level two program is to kind of take you from brand new freshie to actually making a little bit more of a beefy game. Um, and then level three is actually kind of a studio simulation. It's meant to kind of help you make your first actual game release um, and put you in a team with what it would be like to work for a small studio. Um, so that's kind of our three three step program. And then Foundry is meant to be, OK, now you know how to do the thing. Do it. <laughs> Go out there, make a commercial <laughs> group and let us show you how to do it to avoid a lot of the pitfalls um, that a lot of new developers make. Um, so we're basically the, the you can go into the next slide as well. All right, so program breakdown. Um, let's just kind of talk a little bit about that. So the Indie Game Foundry is a 12 month program. Um, it is divided up into two different types of people. It's going to be your studio founders. Those are the ones that actually own the company. We're going to teach you how to set up your LLC, how to set up all the legal stuff. We have a legal package involved with this that we're going to give you that has all the templates and stuff so you can set up your revenue share agreements. Um, and then you also have your team members. So you have your founders and your team members that work together to form that studio. And then throughout the program, if you have a few gaps that are missing, maybe you don't have all the team members you need, that's okay. We will help you also find that from our community members and, and beyond. Um, whoever wants to be part of that registry, we also are going to invite people to be part of that that want to work for these revenue share teams. Um, so those accepted in the program are going to be guided through that 12-month process. Um, Basically, we're going to be talking about setting up your studio, what the business is, how do you set up a business, how do you actually set up all the revenue share stuff, um, how do you go through prototyping, how do you make sure your game is actually market viable. You will have to apply with a concept, but that concept is malleable. Um, we want to make sure people do actually mold their concept into what their audience wants, and we're going to teach you how to do that too. Um, iterating, figuring out, make sure your prototyping and everything is actually right on what your audience wants and, and molding that game around that feasibility to make it actually marketable. Um, and then running a Kickstarter and learning how to self-fund. Um, we are indie here. That means that we really want to teach you how to make it your own way and own path in this in this whole program. So we're teaching you how to also build your own funding through Kickstarter as well as merchandising. All right, go ahead, Jess. All right, here's just kind of a little overview of the Foundry program schedule. Again, phase one, the first quarter is basically figuring out how to do all the things and set up all the stuff and the business stuff and starting the prototyping phase. Then your second quarter is going to be actually starting to make the game, getting into your alphas phase and starting the playtesting process of like internal playtesting and making sure you know everything is starting to work the way you actually want it to. Moving into phase uh, the, the third quarter, which is where you're going to basically be setting up for your Kickstarter launch as well as getting your, your beta phase all put together ready for external playtesting and being able to present that to your external audiences. Um, and then after you go ahead and launch your Kickstarter, the, the final quarter is full production and wrapping it up and actually releasing your full commercial game. All right, go ahead, Jess. All right, and then after the launch, we have basically a two-year commitment we're asking of you. And this is mostly because the game, we want you to make sure that your game actually makes money, <laughs> right? So uh, we are asking you to, after launch, the most is the most intensive part where you're actually going to have to do bug fixing and patches and hot fixes, you know, all that whole process. Um, we just want to make sure your audience, whenever they do actually purchase your game, enjoys it and you fix the things that are inevitably going to be part of the launch process. And then after that, we want to kind of make sure you do at least an update every now and again over the next two years just to make sure it stays relevant and doesn't completely fall off the planet. Um, we're also going to be teaching you like merchandising, all that kind of stuff, really set you up for success um, on the financial side of this, this whole endeavor. So go ahead. All right, so let's talk about how much it costs. So this is an educational incubator. It is an educational program, um, but we have set it up so that we want you to be the most successful you can with this. This is this is meant to support you in creating your own path into the game industry. Um, so the cost of the program is roughly seven thousand, um, and that is for the full twelve month. And that cost is divided up across your team members, however you decide to divide that up. So if one person wants to, you know, be the person that does that, that's fine. If you have three people that want to go in on it together, that's fine too. However you decide you want to do that, that's on you. Um, and typically this is divided up among your founding members, meaning the people that are actually having ownership stakes in the company. Um, how it works is that once you invest that $7,000 into the program, we do have payment plans available as well. So you can do that over a four or six month plan. Um, basically, we're going to teach you how to get to that Kickstarter phase, which is going to be quarter four, like roughly at the beginning of quarter four is where you want to launch that Kickstarter. And from the Kickstarter, as well as any game sales, you're going to recoup that cost first. 
So we don't touch anything until you recoup that 7,000 you invested into the program and into this whole process. And then once you recoup that $7,000, that's where our traditional, like our, our, our publication split happens. And that's going to be 70% to you and then 30% to us. Um, however, as a note with our program, you do keep all your rights to your RP, IP and merchandising, meaning we don't take any of that. So if you're going to go sell your keychains or artwork or, you know, wh whatever you want to do, um, plushies, <laughs> maybe you land, I don't know, maybe you go big and get a commercial TV deal that somebody wants to do a TV show on. I mean, that happened. It can't happen. Um, that's all you. And you also get rights to any kind of sequences and stuff. So if you want to do version two, like you want to use us as a launch point, you're like, okay, I want to learn how to do this right launch your first you know iteration of the game and then you want to do a second you know follow-up sequel of it then you have absolute rights to that sequel and you can just you can just run with it we don't have any rights to that as well no so lum just to answer your question if he doesn't make 7k you do have that 7k investment up front um, that is over a four or six month period or you can pay it all up front if you would like to um, you do recoup that cost however after you kind of launch your Kickstarter. And that's our goal is to kind of get you to recoup that cost first. And then the revenue share agreement kind of kicks in. All right, so to kind of to answer like, so what are we looking for? We're looking for five teams. We're only going to accept five teams into the first cohort. Um, and let me get, hold on, let me get to that slide really quick. On my side, I can't really see it on your side, Jess. Um, <laughs> So oh. we are going to be judging our application cohort, um, our first cohort, uh, and the deadline for that is December 9th for the application deadline. Um, we are accepting five teams into this first iteration of this program, and then it will be launching in January. Um, again, the teams are going to be consistent of two different types of people. You're going to have your founders and then your team members. And the founders are the ones that are applying to the program. If you do already have team members that want to apply with you, that's okay. You can mention them in the application process. Um, or if you're still looking for team members to fill in the gaps, like maybe you need, um, I don't know, maybe you need a sound designer still, like, but you have your artist and you have a programmer, that's fine too. You don't have to have the full team whenever you apply, but you, you need to have the core founders there. Okay, go on. Awesome. So the next one. Um, so ne <clears throat> and now I can take over, but is the screen kind of a weird quality? Is Are people still able to see it? I can see it. It was just small for me. That's why I have mine. Oh, okay. Because my computer is yeah. doing something really weird where everything looks like it's like through some weird lens. But as long as you guys can see it, it doesn't, I don't need to see Discord. <laughs> okay. So now that you guys have a rundown on what uh, Indie Game Foundry is, um, I have linked the website in, um, uh, in the chat, but I will also put a bunch of links at the end of this. So if you missed it, that's totally fine. Um, and again, you do not, need to be applying for Foundry in order to participate in this jam. I just want that to be clear. This is a jam that is an opportunity to work with the team that you want to apply to, to the Foundry with, but you do not have to apply with your game, with the team, with anything that you create during this jam. It's for everybody, um, but it's just off of the Foundry um, concept. So uh, the main takeaway is find people you trust and then start with a game jam. Ha, huh, what do we have for you? We have a game jam, yay. So why should you jam? First of all, they're amazing. You can, became, you can become a game dev god. You can build your portfolio. It validates some of your game ideas that you might have that's swimming around in your head. Um, it can inspire full projects, even if you're doing a game jam over the course of 48 hours or a couple weeks or a month or a couple months. Um, it gives you an idea of uh, a concept that can really be created into a full fleshed out game. And most importantly, it's just here to have fun. Uh, tips for a great jam, um, really, really just do it for the fun of it. Um, if you're not having fun, you should try to have fun. I don't really know how to tell you to have fun, but if you're not having fun, you should be having fun. It's not supposed to be a job. <laughs> um, you do wanna make sure that you're creating clear responsibility splits. Um, with the teammates that you're doing. Uh, so everything isn't just falling on one person. Um, having uh, someone who's gonna be managing the the project is really, really helpful to have. Not every team can have that, um, but just being able to delegate tasks uh, so that everybody feels like they're participating um, and that they have as much stake in the game as everybody else does. Um, you wanna try to finish your game to a playable state by at least the halfway mark at the latest. Um, because the jam kicks off today and the jam game is due on Monday, that would give you about three days um, to 
get it to a, as much of a playable state as you can so you can really work on bugs. That's not always possible. It's just a tip. You don't have to follow it. If you're just creating the game until the very last second, totally fine. Um, but it's just a good benchmark for you to be able to play the game and see what state it's in before you're submitting, um, which leads to play test. Super important to be play testing along every step of the way. Um, it just gets you an idea of how the game is playing out, get people who maybe are on your team playing with it, um, just so they can see bugs that you're not able to see. Um, and they can give you maybe some advice on something that you may think an idea is great and this mechanic is really working. And then somebody comes and play, plays it and it's totally confused and it gives you an outside perspective. Um, and completion is better than perfection. We all wanna have a perfect product that we come out with. Uh, it's much better to complete the game. It can always perfect it later. Uh, so why a GM for a foundry? So each team submitting a foundry application needs a demonstration of how they work together. And so this jam is an opportunity to further develop a prototype or create something completely new if you're a brand new team for your incubator submission. And again, you do not need to be applying for the foundry to take part in this jam, but this jam is an opportunity for you to have something for your application. So what are the details of this jam? Uh, as it's stated on the jam um, page, today is obviously the kickoff. You're all here. If you're not here, we missed you. Where are you? What are you doing? Um, you can watch this video later and get caught up to speed. Uh, and then afterwards, we're going to be having a networking session. From November 12th, so right now, until November 18th, you're going to be creating the game with your team, submitting on itch by the end of day on the 18th. Um, November 19th, um, at 12 p.m. Eastern time, we are going to be having uh, a special class taught by Willem. Um, and it's going to be how to pitch a game and not suck workshop. Uh, so the second part of this jam that's really unique, um, and if people were participating in our Founders Jam that we had a few months ago, we are going to be having a pitch night with some judges. Um, so that gives you an opportunity to not only create the game, but also to practice pitching um, to a panel of judges. Um, I'll be introducing the judges on the next slide, um, but they're just going to be giving feedback, um, giving you tips, giving you advice. Um, uh, commenting, asking questions on your on your game and your pitch um, live. So it is an opportunity to create that pitch and be able to present it. And that workshop will be an opportunity for you to just get some tips on if you've never made a pitch before, what does that even entail? Willem will take you that, through that whole process and I'll post a link in a little bit to get into that event. Um, and then on the 21st of November, which is next, next Thursday, we are gonna be having that pitch night and judge feedback. Um, Based on the amount of submissions we get, um, we'll be able to tell you how much time you will be having for each pitch. We don't know exactly right now because if there's three teams, you'll get a little bit more time. If there's 20 teams, you'll get a smaller amount of time. So once we have an idea of how many submissions we do get, we'll be able to let you know how much time you need to allocate for your pitch so that you can practice. Uh, and again, there's no theme, the theme is just create a fun game, create a cool game, create a crazy game, just create the game of your dreams. Anything that you really want, there's no limitations. We're not giving you some keyword to base your jam off of. Um, it's just, if there's a game that you really wanna make, what's stopping you? Um, but we do ask to abide by the jam rules. There's some rules on the jam page that we do want you to, to follow, including like uh, information about assets um, and, um, you know, no not safe for work content and all of that stuff. Um, so these are the lovely judges that will be joining us on the 21st. We have John Wen, the regional uh, vice president of Canada uh, at Exola. He also was one of the pitch, um, uh, I believe, was he one of, he was one of the pitch um, people for level three, I believe. Yes. Yeah, he was. Um, and then we have our mod, Suryu Narendran. Uh, game, he's a game designer at Gatehound Games. He's also one of our lovely moderators, treasure him. We have Karina Diaz, um, who is the marketing director and community builder at Mighty Yell. And she is also going to be uh, one of uh, the mentors in the Foundry program. So we're really excited to be having her. Um, Tim Wood's gonna be coming. He is the founder at Right Finder Headhunting. You also may have seen him. He hosts career counseling sessions every couple of weeks in our Discord. Wonderful, wonderful person. Um, and then we have Marcus Goncalves. He is an incubation and acceleration mentor at Game Jam Plus. Um, so someone who really knows their game jams is going to be able to give you some really great feedback and advice. And 
every pitched game will get feedback. So again, to reiterate, if you're not applying to Foundry, that's okay. Your game will still get feedback from this wonderful panel of judges. And that's a really rare opportunity um, to get actionable uh, advice, tips, um, feedback from these people. So, and just so you guys know, like these, these are, these people are kind of a big deal. Like these aren't just nobody, like you're getting pitched, like this, this game, like somebody asked a question earlier in the chat that was like, okay, how do you make a good game? Well, it's actually a well, simple no. You just make stuff and you keep making stuff until you get good and you keep on, and that's, you put it in front of your audience and you play test it and you throw that idea out there and you keep on doing it until you get good. And that's real, like, honestly, that's literally how you do it. And these mm -hmm. people on this panel are, they're nuts, y'all. Like, this is an incredible opportunity just to get feedback from people looking at you and making these games is, like, already then and there of itself is awesome. So definitely, like, do the pitch. Be there because it's totally worth it. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be great. And the pitch night's open to... Um... Uh, open for people to attend if we have the, the space. So if you're not going to be pitching um, and we have space to open it up to uh, people who did participate in the jam, we'll do our best to uh, show you what a, a pitch night is at the same time. Uh, so some additional details, um, all teams who desire to participate in the jam pitch night must have their game submitted by, on H by the deadline. Um, and then we want you to be on the lookout for a Google form after the submission, um, as we are gonna collect the information for those who intend to take part in the pitch night. And then once we do have those submissions, we'll reach out to the team to let you guys know how much time you will have to pitch. Though so aim for around five to seven minutes for those pitches. Um, but again, it just depends on how many submissions we do get. Um, <clears throat> for the judging criteria, um, this is subject to change, um, but it is similar. It is the same criteria as what we had in the Founders Jam. Um, so uh, the evaluation will be uh, based on four categories. The game will have fun and polish. And uh, for the pitch itself, uh, marketability and feasibility of creating that game. Um, and again, subject to change. Um, I'll be discussing with the judges uh, and confirming that these are the categories that they're comfortable with, but this isn't a ranked jam. There's no winner. Um, so these are just the, the some key elements that the judges will also be looking for. Uh, and so closing as we wrap up, and I'm really proud that this is at 6.30 because it's exactly the time that I thought we were gonna be ending. No, no, not over, not less. <laughs> um, but the next steps, um, if you still do not have a team, please join us and gather for a networking event immediately after this. Um, I'll be posting the link to the gather and the password momentarily. Um, if you're not already in our Discord, which doesn't really make a lot of sense because you're all here, um, but if you're watching this on YouTube, join our Discord because we do have a few channels to help find teammates and then build a Foundry Team Jam. We do recommend around three to five people, but you can definitely be a solo dev for this and you can definitely have more than five people. As you've seen, if you are familiar with the IGA Mega Jam that had, what, 48 people in our last Mega Jam that we created. <laughs> 48 people, it's a lot of managing. Um, all right, so I'm gonna get some links set up for everybody. Um, but Claire, if you wanna go through and see if anybody has any questions. Um, yeah, definitely. So um, I, I'm just gonna kind of go through some of these questions. I'm actually gonna start from the bottom and work my way up, just gonna be a little bit easier that way. Um, so one question here, are elements like gore allowed in the game if the game contains a warning before showing these elements? So short answer, oh, just, just disappeared, I think. Yes, question mark. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, hi. <laughs> my, Discord, my Discord was freaking out, so I needed to reset it. <laughs> All right. All right. So, um, so, you show elements of gore. so yes, if you go, I'm just actually going to go ahead and link this. Uh, give me one second. Indie Game Academy. Um, so on the Indie Game Academy, you're going to see our values listed. Uh, the, uh, more epic values. Here we go. Bam. Here's what we stand for. This is what's important to us. So the, the, all the games should just adhere to this these core values. So if you want to do something a little spicy, you want to have like not spicy, like don't don't go too crazy on the not safe for work thing <laughs> for this particular jam. Um, but also just just adhere to those core values and you should be fine. Um, just make sure that you know as long as you're adhering to that, you should be good. You can go gory though, I would think. Just do you have any any additional thoughts on that? Like if they want to, as long as they have a content warning on there. 
Yeah, I think content warning is great. Um, trigger warning, but I would, I don't want to like stifle anybody's creativity. Um, but try to keep this friendly and as unoffensive as possible. Um, I know you can really do some pretty interesting stuff with horror and gore that isn't too spicy. I mean, Cult of the Lamb obviously is one of my like, favorite games. Um, so you can you can touch on some some topics, um, but just don't make it a game that anybody under I don't know I can't really say under eighteen, but like you know what I mean <laughs> that you would be proud to show the vast majority of employers that this is a game that you made. <laughs> That's probably the best way. Like, show employers that you made the game. If if they if if they would be suddenly shocked and offended by you making that game, maybe maybe tone it back a bit. Um, like I I love like phasmophobia, ghost hunter games. Like that's got all kind of gore and that kind of stuff. So that kind of direction is fine though. Don't don't yes. don't be worried about that. Um, as far as engines go, any engine is fine. You can use whatever you want. There are no restrictions on theme as far as long as you're ad- adhering to those values. There's no restrictions on theme. There's no restrictions on engine. I saw another person ask, um, can you use, like, does it have to be a new idea? No, actually, it does not. If you've already been working on a game, you can still continue that game. Um, but the, the caveat being you do actually have to do work during the jam. Like, you need to demonstrate this is what we did during this jam period. You can't just submit a game you've already made. Uh, we need to see, if you're going to, to to further a concept you've already started, you need to demonstrate exactly what you did during the jam um, so that we can fairly judge what you um you can also use pre-existing assets or stuff you've worked on beforehand you just need to make sure you have the rights to actually use them um all right somebody else asked so pitch night is this for who signed up for foundry course with the potential to open up to any participant again if you attend the pitch night anybody that attends the pitch night will be given that judge feedback you do not have to apply for the foundry program to be part of this jam this jam is meant to support the community in general um and everyone will get that feedback as long as you come to the pitch night and present your all right going through more questions here um i'm trying to see if i saw any i kind of all the way at the kind top of here, like <laughs> space out i also i wish i could describe what my screen looked like but it looked like it was had like a bunch of a bunch of like wiggly bars all over. <laughs> so I was like, I can't even read what's going on here. Um, so, um, there was a question about the splits and how that works with the Foundry program. So there's a seven thousand yeah. dollar investment that your team would need to pay to be part of the program. On the other side of it, we are also investing um, seven around seventy thousand dollars of IGA's funds to launch this program. So we are we are looking for some kind of skin in the game. We are actually looking for you to be committed to the program. That's why we charge an upfront cost for that. But we're also teaching you to set up to be financially successful yourself. Um, as far as the actual split goes, that's why we pay you back first. Um, we're not taking anything until you recoup the cost to join the program. And then that split does come in after um, public, like the publication uh, fees. So for example, public, publishing on Steam, they take 30% of that publication. Um, or of your revenue, um, our split comes in after that. So it will be the 70-30 split of, of after that cost is already accounted for, not a 70-30 or um, yeah, 70-30 split of before that. Um, so that's actually better for you. A lot of people do that just flat revenue. We do not. Um, all right. Um, did you did you answer Pat's question? The rules stated that has to be a new idea. Did we misread that? Do we need to reiterate um, anything more on that? I'm reading the rules right now on itch. The game must be original and not featured in a previous jam. So it just can't be something that you used in a jam already because obviously you didn't create it during this jam period. Um, but it can be a game that you've started. There just needs to be a demonstration of what the what the game was before you made changes. So if you are working on a game that already in a way exists, there is there should be a way for you to upload, I believe, multiple links on itch that show various stages. So if you can do uh, a submission that says, this is what the game was as of like 11, 12, 2024, and then we'll be able to see what the difference is that you worked on over the course um, of the next few days. Um, but you can use existing game ideas, existing assets, um, assets that you have the licenses for. So if it's a paid asset, as long as you do have the asset for, you do have the the license for it, you can use that. Um, uh, I, we don't expect everybody to 
diligently create every single tree that they put in the game. That's kind of, <laughs> we're not asking for that <laughs> in this. So it, oh, just as long as you're, there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing copywritten that you're submitting um, that clearly is work that you're not, uh, that you don't have the ability to distribute. Um, yeah, no copyright yeah. infringement. Yeah. Yep. Okay. The whole point of this game, Jam, is for you all to make a cool thing together. Like, that's mm -hmm. really what we want you to, to flex your muscles. We want you to flex the game dev skills you have and just make something cool. Like, that's that's really the point. And show us what you can do. Um, if you do actually continue that idea and kind of do what Jess was talking about, like, upload what it is first in one of the links and then have, like, okay, this is what we did during the Jam. Please also include a summary so that we know that you did, like, what you actually accomplished during the Jam period as well. Um, okay, so I do have a question. Do you see a path for people enrolling in the upcoming level three cohort to roll that into the Foundry program? Or would the plan be for those to keep going with the eventual second cohort? Um, so it depends on the dates. Uh, so for the basically level three is meant to be the step before Foundry. Um, however, they are not required. We just require that you have a game released, which this jam actually does, uh, does meet that requirement. Um, so as far as the actual current upcoming level three, just as, are you able to answer that question? Do you see this as a level three into the foundry? I mean, I know that we do have an upload, like our deadline is, is December 9th for this actual, this cohorts um, um, application. Uh, so. I mean, it's not a requirement to go through level three, if that's, if that helps. Um, uh, it's, you can be, you can have come into the foundry having never gone through any of our classes and you just are, you have a solid application um, and uh, you demonstrate that we should put the trust uh, in your team and the project that you wanna create. Um, level three is a really great opportunity for you to meet people because you are put on a team um, with uh, other individuals who are learning how to build their own indie game studio. So if you are, just not sure if the foundry is right for you and the commitment just yet. That one's a four month commitment and um, you get put on a team. You meet a lot of people within the cohort as well. So people, you might meet people from outside your team that you also vibe with. Um, it's just a really great networking experience and gives you uh, an additional portfolio piece at the end of it. Uh, did that answer that so, question? <laughs> for retail, you, you still can apply. You don't have to complete yeah. this program yeah. before you apply to the found like the Foundry program. Um, it's just you do have to have at least one game released. And the, the program is meant to be um, for people that are familiar with the tools they're going to be using. So if, if it's your first time programming, maybe not the program for you. You should probably spend a little bit more time to like learn. Um, but as long as you're comfortable and familiar with the tools you're going to be using in your specialty for the game development process, then that's completely fine. You don't have to take the other courses um, to qualify for the Foundry program. And if you have more questions than that, we do have the website as well that you can kind of peruse. We also have a, a Foundry section on our Discord, which you're welcome to ask, and we have an FAQ form there as well. Um, all right, I did see one other question in here. I know, Mark, you want to win. Mark won the, um, the Founders Game Jam. So... Uh, Someone you definitely want on your team, if you're looking for a teammate, uh, is Mark. Um, so if that was a pitch, I don't know, Mark, if you have a team yet, but I am offering you up as tribute. <laughs> All right. So I, I think I have one last question. Any last questions throw them in the chat right now, because we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. And we will be moving right into our gather for a mm -hmm. networking session after this. So if you're still looking for teammates or you're looking to join a team, um, or if you have even more questions about Foundry, you're welcome to also join us in the Gather. We're going to be hanging out yes. in there for a little bit after this. Um, but I do want to answer this. So John asked, for someone shy, how do you gain confidence in networking? And oh, the yeah. answer is, is yeah, do it. <laughs> and you, yeah, yeah, yeah kind of like be awkward a little bit. Like, it's okay. Ahead, I'm... Yeah, it's okay. Like, you're, you have to understand everybody's a person, right? Everybody is, uh, at the end of the day, we're all human. I would hope. <laughs> so we're all going to be mistakes. We all have those awkward feelings, even if some of us are a little bit better at hiding them than others. So the best way to get me. I'm so awkward. You guys don't even <laughs> understand. Like I run this, like I'm just, <laughs> take it from and me. So. <laughs> we're also game devs. And if you haven't noticed, like we're kind of like, we're kind of a little weird sometimes and we're a little bit quirky. So like, 
I guarantee you that you're going to network with somebody who also is either shy or feeling weird or, you know, whatever. So just do it. Like, honestly, quite frankly, exposure and just trying it and doing it until until you just 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 keep doing it and just kind of push yourself through that awkwardness. That's the best way you're going to get better at it. So I would encourage people who are shy about networking to join our networking. Yes. Event, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the practice right. makes better and better yeah. can sometimes lead to perfect sometimes but the only way you'll really get the, the like the practice in or like figure out what works for you is just to talk to people I like to have um like certain topics that I know I'll like go to first if I'm just meeting somebody and it's usually going to be about animals <laughs> so <laughs> like just find yeah. something that you think is likely relatable and be able to talk to somebody about it. it doesn't necessarily have to be about video games it can just be about something like almost everybody likes animals it's like kind of like a a baseline easy thing that you can just talk to people about oh my god that's the cutest talk <laughs> i'm gonna cry <laughs> um so there was question oh my god jess <laughs> we love jess that's just that's what, that's what we love <laughs> You broke Jess. <laughs> Allie, look what you did. This is what this is what you did. You did. You did. Okay. Also, just so you know, this is how our this is how our, our meetings go as well all the time. This is literally like this is how it goes. <laughs> so, okay. All right. Um, so question. you're uh, gonna point to the uh, to the gather and um, uh, Jess, there was one more question before we pop over oh, there. I'm so sorry. Um, okay. That's okay. Um, is there different category awards for this jam? So do we want to touch really quick on those different like theme? Oh my God, are you are y'all still breaking Jess over here, Corey? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> y'all are crazy. Um, you were talking about <laughs> after you get over the cute animals, Jess. <laughs> I'm, I completely regret having said that I was so proud we were done at 6.30 because it's 15 minutes later. It is. It is. Um, there are some categories we will be judging you based off of. Uh, Jess, do you want to go over that list really quick? Um, yes. So it will be, uh, I don't have it in front of me now, but it will be, the game will be fun and polish. Um, and for your pitch, it will be market marketability and feasibility. But like I said, those might change. They might be a little different. We'll let you guys know um, once we um, get the uh, submissions all squared away. All right. <clears throat> Any other questions before we pop over into our networking session? OK, so last thing, just go ahead and flood the chat with cute pictures for Jess. <laughs> Do it real quick. And we'll <laughs> There it is. <laughs> um, it, the the quickest way to my heart though, um, my t my top 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 animal <laughs> is that. <laughs> I have meltdowns if I see them. Oh my in, god! In the zoo, I will just lose my mind if I see a red panda. <laughs> The little, the little wine cup kitties, just oh my goodness! All right, y'all, now you're starting to get me. This is all right. That's, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. <laughs> um. Okay, let's port right, over to the gather. Sure. If you guys don't want to come to the gather, you just want to jump in and make it a game. Go do the thing. Be free. Go have some fun. If you're still looking for a team, you have questions about Foundry, or you just want to come hang out, come hang out with yeah. us. We're gonna be yeah. over and gather. Um, Jess, can you link link that one more time? Yeah. And the password is Foundry. Boundary, lower F, 